good evening to everyone uh, so i will be talking on congenital hypothyroidism with uh, so i will be talking on congenital hypothyroidism uh, with uh, special emphasis on newborn screening congenital uh, hypothyroidism but we can't congratulate ourselves on this diagnosis because for this case that just the diagnosis is not important what's more important is making the diagnosis in the right time and for this child the time has been lost now it has become too late now how much ever well you treat this child this child is never going to be uh, ne never going to uh, uh, to have a normal intelligence for his entire life so essentially we have added a mentally retarded child or a child with intellectual disability to our society so for this situation let's face some facts opportunities and the challenges so the facts are that the congenital hypothyroidism it's the most common cause of preventable mental retardation and it has got a high incidence rate and when coupled with the high birth rate in india it poses a potential risk of adding a significantly high number of mentally compromised infants and children to our society every year if we don't screen them at the neonatal age so here comes the opportunity that newborn screening is the most effective way to detect and treat an infant with ch before it becomes too late like for our previous case but the challenge is that that we do not have a national nbs program in india at present so on this background we all must be aware about few more things that this screening method by tsh it's uh, really cheap and is easily available uh, in a routine chemistry labs nearby uh, almost everywhere and this uh, screening and treatment is extremely cost effective and uh, very less less than 10% of the newborns or in uh, infants they become symptomatic in the first month of life so until unless we detect them we screen them at birth we can't detect them in time and we can't uh, start the treatment in time but if we do this if we screen and we detect Uh, this case and we start treatment in time that is before 2 weeks of age a near normal outcome can be expected so here we can see that more the delay in the initiation of treatment worse is the intellectual outcome now talking about some basic thyroid physiology we all know that there is a tsh surge within 30 minutes after birth and uh, which is due to stress of the labor or the birth process and it's followed by rise in t4 this surge settles uh, between 2 to 5 days of postnatal age so we have to avoid this surge for taking the sample to avoid the false positivity so to avoid this we have two options either we take a cord blood sample which is not affected by the surge or we take a postnatal sample that too collected 48 hours after birth so just for the clarity i just want to emphasize that the samples for a newborn screening for ch are of just two types a cord blood sample or a postnatal sample how you send it where you send it that's another matter that we will be coming in the next slide so talking about some practical aspects now first thing is that which test to do tsh versus t4 so after too much of deliberations and data and research now the tsh based screen is adopted worldwide and we also in our country and to our guidelines we have adopted the same tsh based screen now which sample to send and how and where to send so if you have a central nbs facility available then you have to send the sample on a filter paper as a dried blood spot this sample you can collect postnatally as a postnatal sample you can collect on filter paper by simple heel play or if it, you want to take a cord blood sample then that sample can also be also be uh, sent on the filter paper by laying down upon the uh, uh, the area like and making it a dry blood spot so either a cord blood sample or a postnatal heel prick sample both could be sent as a dry blood spot to a central nbs facility but if you do not have a central nbs facility and if you are if you have to send the sample to a nearby routine chemistry lab then you have to send this serum sample sample is a serum sample so if you are sending a postnatal sample then it simply means that you have to venipuncture the child but if you want to avoid venipuncturing a neonate 
then a simply a cord blood can be collected at the time of birth and can be sent as a serum sample to the nearby lab okay so now next uh, practical aspect is about the reporting units so for a serum sample it can be reported only in the serum units but if you are sending a filter paper sample as a dried blood spot then this can be reported both in a whole blood unit or as well as in the serum units for that you have to preset the machine that in which unit you want the report but how but in in whichever unit it gives the report you can manually calculate it as the serum unit is 2.2 times of the whole blood unit it just a correction for the hematocrit okay and to avoid this confusion versus whole blood versus serum units to our guidelines and this talk also all the tsh values all the cutoffs will be described in terms of serum units for the sake of uniformity now timing of the sample so we just discussed either we take a cord blood sample or a postnatal sample after 48 hours of birth but in certain specific situations like uh, uh, some centers may be having an early discharge policy so for them we have to take we may take an early sample but never before 24 hours of birth at most between 24 to 48 hours of birth the only thing is that when we will be analyzing the report then the cut off value for these early samples will be slightly different that will come to that later essentially no infant should be sent home without ch screen so in some other specific situations like preterm iugr sick neonate or down syndromes a uh, initial screen may miss ch huh? so then for these conditions we have to take a second sample after 2 weeks of age between 2 to 4 weeks <clears throat> so we have to remember these special situations in which we have to take a second sample in addition to the first sample now coming to the interpretation part so whatever sample we have taken either a heat leak sample or a cord blood tsh so the report if it's more than 20 20 or more it's abnormal 30 that for early sample we just talked about so that is 34 if sample was taken between 24 to 48 hours 34 or more is abnormal next if it's more than 40 then these cases are more uh, likely to have a confirmed ch primary ch so for them we take a confirmatory venous sample means sample taken by a venipuncture and to be analyzed for both t4 and tsh if you are likely to get the report with the next one day then wait for the report but if you are not likely to get the report with the next one day or tsh is really high like to the tunes of more than 80 then you start the treatment and then let the report come do not wait for the report to start the treatment another category between 20 to 40 tsh uh, it's a borderline it could be or it may not be uh, uh, confirmed case of ch so for these cases we do a repeat testing repeat screening in the second week of life as early as possible in the second week of life between 7 to 10 days preferably so if that tsh comes more than 20 for less than 2 weeks of age or more than 10 for more than 2 weeks of age which should not happen because we are we intend to start the treatment by 2 weeks of age but still uh, practically everything may not be so ideal so that's abnormal and then we have to take the confirmatory venous sample here one thing i want to emphasize and uh, stress upon that if this repeat screening sample you are sending to a nearby lab this means you will be sending a serum sample as a by doing a vene puncture so then to avoid one more vene puncture in case the report comes abnormal take it as a confirmatory venous sample itself and send this sample this venous sample serum sample both for t4 and tsh and then see the reports again for the uh, uniformity all the values have been mentioned in the serum units now coming to the results so if tsh is normal and t4 is normal well and good if tsh is high and uh, t4 is low low high tsh we just uh, talked about and low t4 means total t4 less than 10 mg per dl and uh, free t4 less than 1.17 nanogram per dl it's considered low so it's a confirmed case of uh, primary congenital hypothyroidism start the treatment as soon as possible for the two borderline situations like normal t4 normal tsh and low t4 
and high TSH and normal T4. We will be discuss, discussing those uh, situations in the next slide. Again, a diagnosis should be made on the confirmatory venous sample analysis only. So now for some borderline conditions like borderline high TSH with normal T4. This can happen in a transient or a milder variety of prime DCH or in Down syndrome and in some other cases as well. So for these cases, we uh, repeat the test after two weeks. And if this TSH remains elevated more than 10 beyond three weeks of life, even with normal T4, start the treatment. Another situation where T4 is low, but TSH is normal. This condition may, uh, may be seen in a case of hypothyroxinemia of prematurity or TBG deficiency or even in the central hypothyroidism, which is much less common than the primary hypothyroidism. So if you think that it's a central hypothyroidism, then rule out the other pituitary hormone deficiency and treat accordingly. And if you think that it's a, some transient condition, then again, we may retest after two to four weeks and we see that if we see any abnormal reports due to any delayed rise. So again, any, any time a referral can be sought if needed. So now after making the diagnosis, now evaluation, etiological evaluation. Etiological evaluation is important because some entities cause permanent conditions, permanent hypothyroidism, and some entities cause transient hypothyroidism. So it's very important to important for the prognosis and for explaining to the parents the course of illness and the course of the, uh, uh, the, the disease. And some other rare, uh, less common conditions are there, which can also be picked upon uh, by simple etiological e evaluation. They are rare, but they can be seen. So now, uh, like we talked, it's important for the counseling and for explaining the prognosis and the course of the disease to, to the parents. And uh, we do thyroid ultrasound and as well as technician 99 thyroid scan. One thing uh, I would like all you to note that if this, this USG can be done at any time, but this scan, it should be done preferably when TSH is elevated. So, but the most paramount uh, thing is treatment. If you are able to get the scan in time, it's well and good. If not, then do not wait to start the treatment for getting the imaging done. Treatment should be started. So now a combination of thyroid scan and ultrasound, it leads to, a, uh, to almost uh, uh, like all the common uh, conditions causing uh, primary hypothyroidism. So, uh, so just to explain that. So suppose on a thyroid scan, we got the uptake at the base of the tongue. So it simply means it's a lingual ectopic thyroid. If there was no uptake, either in the neck or elsewhere in the body, so then we do USG thyroid. If gland is not visualized, this means there is a thyroid agenesis or visualized but very small, so it could be a dysgenesis as well. Or if the gland is seen, then it could be a case of a maternal blocking thyroid antibody, which was probably uh, inhibiting the thyroid uptake. If uptake was high, increased uptake, then again do the USG. It mostly shows enlarged gland, and then it's a suggestive of dishormonogenesis. For that, we do a chloride discharge test. A genetic studies can be done anytime. It's a, it confirms the final diagnosis. If uptake is normal and gland is normal on the USG, still the biochemically it was hypothyroid, then it could be a, a transient condition, a very mild variety of primary hypothyroidism, or even secondary hypothyroidism. Now coming to the treatment. So this treatment must start before two weeks of age to prevent the permanent neurocognitive damage. Uh, levothyroxine is uh, given uh, the rate of 10 to 15 migram per kg per day mixed with breast milk till six months of age and then with water. It should be soaked and crushed very well before giving it to the child. Hearing screening should be done at the onset, uh, at the diagnosis and then periodically. Follow up, initially we do follow up with, with both T4 and TSH. Uh, at uh, two to four weeks. And when T4 normalizes, then we can monitor and we can follow up with TSH less, uh, a bit more frequently till three years of age and post that a bit less frequently, maybe three to six monthly or six to 12 monthly in the adults, post adolescent age group. Uh, for the reassessment, if uh, uh, etiological assessment was not, could not be done at the diagnosis or uh, uh, if, uh, if uh, you are not sure whether it's a permanent or it's a transient condition, very low LT4 is required, then reassessment should be done, but after three years of age. And because we need to stop LT4, uh, levothyroxine for six to eight weeks, and that we can't do before three years of age. This is the uh, T4 
thyroid profile, T4, FT4, and TSH age wise range. While treating, we try to maintain T4 and FT4 in the upper half of the normal range and TSH in the lower half of the normal range. And again, the of equal importance is the education of the family. The family must be aware that any laxity on their part, on the compliance, may cause a permanent damage to their child. So the treatment should not be plotted upon by them at any cost. And if needed, give a written uh, document to them and must ensure that the, they keep coming for the follow-up. Now for the follow-up, apart from biochemical follow-up, we uh, have to follow for the growth, puberty, development, as well as the hearing assessment. Uh, all thing, uh, everything is like of equal importance. Uh, now for checking of the uh, uh, permanency of CH, like reassessment, uh, we do it after three years of age as we talk. So we stop thyroxine for, for four weeks and recheck T4 and TSH. If TSH is more than 10, then uh, imaging should be done if it was not done earlier and then restart the treatment. If TSH is borderline or it's normal, then we have to keep the child under follow-up for some more time and make sure this uh, there should be no loss to follow up because you may lose a potential case of uh, primary CH or maybe secondary CH. So uh, they must come for the follow up at least for next few years. Now coming to the conclusion. So most of the conclusions are the same, which we just talked uh, in the last 20 minutes. Uh, like uh, mm, a treatment should be started within two weeks of age, a follow-up is important uh, and all the same things and reassessment should be done after three years of age. But the most important takeaway uh, from this uh, uh, talk, if I want you all, all of you to have, is that uh, the newborn screening should be a must for all pediatricians as well as endocrinologists. Thank you.